This conference will now be recorded. All right, guys, what's going on? Back at it. We are now in Chapter 6. We're going to talk about the other D word, debt. Debt. Yes, everyone gets scared of debt. I understand. Well, we're going to go and break it down. Maybe you're watching this because you are in debt or you want to stay away from debt. So let's go ahead and kind of talk about debt, good versus bad. But the first thing I want to start off with is you have bad debt and how we get out of it. Well, I'm going to borrow again, Nerd Wallet, great website, not sponsored by them, just a heads up, we just like their website, uh, nerdwallet.com. Feel free to check out the Debt Snowball Calculator. Debt Snowball is the best way, in my opinion, to get out of debt. It's going to take some budgeting, it's going to take some sacrifice to get out, but we're going to go ahead and go over it together. We talked about how debt works, right? Credit cards, personal loans, what have you. Again, there's tons of debt, but we're going to focus on credit cards for right now since they're probably the most available, the easiest to use, and easiest to get a you know, get it away from your handle from because people start spending like it's going out of style. And remember, you're not Congress who can just spend forever by the government. You don't print money, guys. So you're gonna have to live with it on your own means in order to win with money. So big shout out to Dave Ramsey who created the debt snowball because it works. It works, guys. It's just simple math. And and remember, personal finance, I didn't talk about this before, is about 80% behavior, 20% head knowledge. Another Dave Ramsey quote, love him, love him, big shout out to him. And this is your behavior here. So let's talk about that snowball. So you're in debt, your total balance on your debt is about $6,500, surrounded by three cards. So I went ahead and listed them from smallest balance to largest balance. Now there's different ways to do this. There's something called the debt avalanche or the debt whatever. Debt snowball is the way to do it. Forget the interest rate, that's mathematics. Yes, I understand. You only wanna do the, the, the highest interest rate, knock it out. No, you need quick wins. You need quick wins in order to win with money, guys. So again, lowest balance first. Knock that out first. That's your debt snowball. Snowballs get bigger the more snow they capture, hence the debt snowball. So I went ahead and wrote three different uh, credit cards here. Let's kind of go over it together. First one, you have a Macy's card. You spend a little bit for Christmas on your family. $500 balance. Interest rate on those cards are pretty high, 19%. Your minimum payment's 40 bucks. But if you pay $40 forever, you're going to be paying a lot of interest for the rest of your life. Again, don't keep credit cards around just because that's not how you win with money. Just a heads up. Debt two, Shell gas station credit card. You rack up a lot of gas, $1,000, right? 24% 20 interest rate. I just put ahead and put a $100 minimum payment on it. You don't want to keep that forever either. That'll grow as well. Just like savings grow, debt grows with interest. Of course, you don't get 19% interest on your savings, but they'll charge you 19% interest on your debt. And debt number three, Chase credit card, 5,000 balance, 16% interest rate, and a $200 minimum payment. Again, just estimate numbers. I just threw numbers on the board for you. Okay, so how do we do this? First thing you're gonna do when it comes to the decimal ball is you're gonna attack the first one. You wanna throw everything you got into that one. Obviously, we talked about the budgeting. Your needs stay the needs, but you're gonna have to take away a little bit from your wants or your savings in order to knock these out. So again, I still say keep a savings account. According to Dave Ramsey, $1,000 uh, emergency fund is always first. Your baby emergency fund, get that in savings first, just like we talked about with online savings. Then start working on your debt snowball. So let's go ahead and do that. Macy's credit card, $500 balance. Let's freaking attack it. Start throwing some extra cash in there. Maybe you have to Uber. Maybe you have to deliver some pizzas, work some extra cash, side hustles, whatever. Knock it out. Maybe you have to pull some money from your savings, knock it out. As long as it's not below 1000 go ahead and knock that credit card out and move on. What you do now is a snowball. That payment that you used to make on Macy's, that 40 bucks right here, you're gonna move that payment over to Shell. So instead of being a $100 minimum payment, it's now 140. And you still pay minimum payments on number three. When you're doing minimum payments, or when you're paying out number one, you still do the minimum payments on the others. So you calculate, thanks to our wallet, and you see your current monthly payment. Let's say I can't add any extra cash on anything. So We'll do a snowball. Let's say I'm gonna pay an extra $200 a month. Oh, sorry, I put 200. $200 a month, ah, what's going on? $200 a month, right? $200 extra a month, I can pay off on my cards and knock this out. We're starting from today, December, uh, February 16th. So we did the, the snowball method. We just said, you know what, all I have is an extra $200 a month, Carlos, I'm gonna go ahead and do the, uh, do the debt snowball, cool. So your current monthly payment on all those three cards is 340 bucks. Your total interest is 1,310. Your debt-free date would be 2022, two years. But if you do the debt in the snowball, your total monthly payment goes up 200 bucks, 
your total interest is cut more than half, and you're debt free a lot sooner, a year and a half sooner, guys. Pretty great stuff. Your Macy's will pay less $40, $49 in savings of interest. Your interest would be $12 total after doing the, uh, the debt snowball, and you'll pay it off in two months. The Shell Gas, your principal is a thousand bucks. Your interest is cut in half as well. Instead of 126 in interest, it's 66 bucks. And also, you'll knock it out in four months. And Chase, again, total interest $1,100 versus $577. Bucks. Probably about 40% less. Again, you'll pay this off by next March in comparison to two years, right? So look at the difference. You'll be saving $654 in interest by paying off your debt using the debt snowball in one year and six months faster. It's all about speed. So you'll be debt free by March 2021. You can always add as much debt as you want and as much cards as you want or less cards as you want. Again, math gets a lot better the more you add, obviously. So let's say you do $500 a month because you had a side hustle and you knocked it out. Well, you'd pay off your Macy's right away. You have more, more interest to pay. You'd pay your Shell gas card in two months. You'd save 37, you'll pay only $37 in interest, $89 saved in interest versus 126. And your Chase card, oof, you'd be done by October. Instead of paying $1,122 in interest, Pay minimum payments, you'll be only paying 370 bucks. You'll save $751 in interest. By doing this, you'll save $902 in interest and you'll pay off your debt in almost two years quicker. You'll be debt free by October, 2020. So again, investments are great guys, don't get me wrong. I'm all about investing. But the quickest way to get return on your money is to knock out debt because those are high interests that you're paying. So you're gonna get that back ASAP. So again, this is the probably the best rate of return on your money is the debt snowball knocking out these debts, guys. So again, it's very simple. Debt snowball calculator on Nerd Wallet. You can go right here. First one that comes up, debt snowball calculator. You can go to add debt, delete debt, do whatever you want. And guys, it's the easiest way to do it. Debt snowball is smallest to largest. Debt avalanche is highest interest rate to lowest interest rate. But again, these are just for credit cards and personal loans. When it comes to student loans, kind of move that on the side for a little bit. Your mortgage, move that on the side. Well, add your card there too. Again, debt is debt, but again, when it comes to student loans, it's a little higher up, lower interest rate, easier to maneuver, and mortgages, well, they're big, and it's going to be difficult to kind of uh, pay off your 30-year mortgage rate in, you know, five years. You have to come up with a lot of money. So when it comes to mortgage, again, it's still your asset. So again, you're not in such a rush to pay it off immediately. What if you can knock it out? But again, it's just I'm just letting you know that you don't want to get discouraged by seeing mortgage I owe. 300,000 on it. That's just going to make you feel bad. It's all about quick wins. It's all about psychology here. Debt snowball is the way to go. Now, debt, the D word, right? We hate debt. Okay, we hate stupid debt. There's a difference between dumb debt and good debt. So, how are we going to do that? Good debt versus bad debt. We're going to, oh, I put God debt. Sorry, good debt versus bad debt. And you're going to see the difference. So, you go to debt.org. So, Let's go to their wallet since we're stuck with them, right? We love them. Good debt. What is a good debt? I may not agree with this, but student loans. Student loans, again, if you're getting specialized in college, you're going to be a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer, something like that. Again, you're investing in yourself. You're borrowing money to increase your income in the future. They are technically a good debt because you're going to increase your income. If you're just borrowing money to study German folk dancing, not so much. So keep that in mind. You want to have something specialized. If you're just going to go to school because your parents told you to, forget it. Not a good idea because you're going to pay for it, not them. No, they, if you have scholarships and stuff like that, great. Knock yourself out. But again, for the most part, student loans, try to stay away, right? Great. Next one, mortgages. Well, mortgage. Your home is an asset. You live in it. So that's considered a good debt because, well, you live in your home and it's your property and it's an asset, like I said. So you need to understand what is a good level to have when it comes to a mortgage. Personally, I say less than a quarter home, quarter of your take-home pay, which is 25%. If you make $10,000 a month, that's great. You shouldn't be paying more than $2,500 of uh, on your mortgage. Uh, that's take-home pay. But some guidelines have 36%. That's pretty high. But again, because you have other stuff in your budget. But again, you can always refinance your mortgage to lower the rate, especially with low rates now. As of February 2020, there's a good way to lower your rates, what have you. That's a whole different discussion. This is a good debt. Another one is car loans. 
good dead versus bad dead. Now I'm gonna get a little, I'm gonna be a little uh, debate, debated here on good, good on Nerd Wallet. You don't need a new car to survive. You can get a used car, a used Honda Civic. It's probably gonna need to be cleaned up, maybe a couple of maintenance here and there, new tires, whatever. But again, I'd rather you win with money, drive a beater of a car that's 5,000 bucks, then buy a BMW you can't afford and pay $800 a month. Guys, if you can afford a car in cash and just drive a beater and you don't care what kind of car you drive, you know you want to win with money. If you want to impress people and drive a BMW, by all means do it. Again, if you can afford it, fine. I just think that that's that smart, in my opinion. Rather you, you know, sacrifice a little bit, maybe drive a car that's not that great for about two years. I'm not saying drive a complete piece of crap car, lemon, no. But again, you can buy a used Civic that's from 2004 for like four grand in cash or borrow $4,000 from the bank. A lot less interest, a lot less payments than just run into the dealership and pay for a $50,000 BMW because you want to look good. Not worth it to me. You want to be rich, not look rich. Completely different. Next one. What is bad debt? High interest credit cards. You know, name it. You know, Chase, American Express, Citibank, whatever. Uh, Macy's, uh, uh, Express card from the stores. Uh, you know, if you have a Best Buy card, as an example. Those are bad debt because that's expensive. Uh, next one, personal loans because you want to go out clubbing or you want to go to vacation. Save for that, guys. Be smart. Save. Save a little bit for that. Don't borrow money because you're not patient. Debt is basically the reflection of impatience, usually the bad debt. Next one, payday loans. This should always be the last resort. Unless you absolutely have to, have to, have to, have to get a payday loan, and that should be the last resort. I'd rather you borrow money from your family than do this because you're basically fronting your paycheck and the interest rates can be up to 300%. Be very careful, guys. I would stay the hell away from payday loans. Bad, bad, bad debt. A lot of people uh, don't know the difference. You just gotta stay away from this, guys. This is why budgeting is so important. That's what we talked about in the last video, guys. So again, in conclusion, debt snowball. Best way to get out of debt. There is good debt, there is bad debt. Good debt, get. example, you're buying a home to rent out. Again, that's an asset. Um, uh, you know, your student loans, again, if you're trying to get further your education because you're going to increase your, your viability in regards to income, keep in mind, guys, study the major that you're going to do if you're in college and how much the, the, um, salary it is. You can check uh, glassdoor.com and see what the jobs are posting for those uh, degrees. Again, don't borrow hundred thousand dollars because you want to be a ballet teacher may not be smart, but if you want to go to med school and you're going to finish it, by all means, go and balls to the wall and knock it out, guys. And that's the case. It's going to cost you some money, but you're going to be making six figures anyways, but you just might want to knock it out really quick, guys. So you may want to add the student loans to your debt snowball, which you can, again, as an example. But again, the bad debt. We know high interest credit cards, personal loans for stupid stuff that you don't need, and payday loans. Don't need it. You just don't need it, guys. So again, good versus debt versus bad debt. Not all debt is bad. Keep that in mind, not all debt is bad, and definitely not all debt is good. So again, uh, sometimes you know you need to borrow money from, you know, you get a mortgage so you can buy that first property that you want to rent out so you can cash flow it. You're gonna have to get a mortgage to buy that place. I mean, that's a good, that's a good debt because you're financing an asset like a home. But again, getting financing for something stupid, don't be making minimum payments because you want to buy the new Jordans. That's really dumb. Don't do that, guys. Pay in cash, use your debit card or what have you, be smart. Don't use debt to gamble either. Another one, don't borrow money to trade in the markets or to invest. That's smart either. Again, use cash as always. So again, debt snowball and nerd wallet. You can feel free to Google it. Link is up there. Good bet versus bad debt. If you need a refresher, it's on there or watch this video again. So again, debt, not as bad as people say, but again, it can be a downfall for your wealth. I always say, guys, when it comes to cars, cars, people are obsessed with cars, guys. You can get a nice beater of a car, you can get a Corolla, you can get a Honda Civic, something like that for like two years and just run with it and save some cash, then you can get something great. When you're rich, guys, you can buy whatever the hell car you want. That's great. Don't try to, don't go broke trying to be, look rich. Forget looking rich. Be rich first, then you can buy rich people stuff. Then you can buy all the cars you want and all that cool stuff. That's great, but get there first. Work your way up there and then you can buy the cool stuff, guys. I really hope this helps. Next chapter is credit cards. Oh, another one. People hate it, right? Well, I'm going to show you how to use credit cards effectively and to your benefit. So we talked about that a little bit on chapter two in cash and everything and different methods of credit. Let's talk about credit cards and don't be scared of them. And we're going to talk about credit cards and your credit.
that's a big one. So we're gonna talk about that next. We'll see you in the next chapter, guys.